Okay, so I, uh, we have three papers. So my, my, our first paper was jointly with the, it, it's just, <coughs> well, a response to this uh, workshop from a, a reflection that is going on. And now we have a project approved that began uh, more or less now. And, uh, and then <coughs> we'll have a student from, from um, Eduardo Haddad to come here in, uh, in January and uh, we'll develop for one year. Uh, and the main, uh, the main ideas I'm, uh, I'm trying to develop is that uh, we have this, uh, this pandemic. Uh, it, it came from a, 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 a chapter that is coming on on this complexity <coughs> uh, book uh, edited by Aura Regiani and others. And the idea is that, okay, complexity is complex, but space helps to understand complexity. So uh, in, uh, in this chapter, what we, we did was uh, here to first to understand that uh, human interaction is what we aim for, well, optimize human interaction. So that reveals that somehow the entropy function that uh, Wilson and others uh, derived as the maximization and the constraints <coughs> of human interaction, of sp uh, spatial interaction, that then leads to a, a, a gravity model if maximized. That same function as taken as an utility function or the production function as a maximum here it is not coming this. Okay, one moment. Uh, why is not coming? Uh, sorry. Yeah. That same utility function here uh, as a maximum in terms of these, <coughs> these entropy points, this maximum entropy point which corresponds to a rational uh, optimization that we want to maximize the flows. And then, but we, uh, uh, organisms, they don't want to maximize the flows of interaction, they want to maximize the stock, their own stock. And that's why they maximize here. So we are not organisms, we are an organism, but we are rational, first idea. And that is the idea that came in that chat, okay? And uh, I used it as an explanation to somehow to derive the, the evolution of co the organic formula to explain the evolution of COVID in Portugal in the first 12 weeks. And, but also using the spatial dimension of the, these uh, weighted matrix, special matrix, somehow calibrated for the long period of uh, 50 years that we had data on demographics. So we, we also have the, a, demographic, a demographic model a growth model that assumes that uh, people can move from within the country uh, to where they have jobs. I can explain, we explain visual development in terms of the population in the long term. So these are, so the same, same spatial structure helps the organic model and helps the rational model. And we have, uh, Patricia is not here, of course, you'll correct for the, the error. So, but anyway, the, uh, the, it facilitates the, the understanding of complexity. And that is the, Project we that were accepted by the Portuguese Research Foundation uh, last May, but now uh, well, they, they are delayed because there is not much money, and eventually it will begin now. So I think it is mainly to uh, we have done this for 12 weeks and we have done this for Portugal, uh, 25 zones. Now we are going to do it for that's our task for 308 municipalities and for more uh, data that the uh, Castro collected in uh, 
in, in, uh, from the coffee. So that was eventually what I would like to bring here, uh, this, uh, this extension of this model to this more detailed uh, regionally and to more, uh, uh, with more, more data on the different waves of the coffee. But then, uh, when I was preparing to come here, well, instead of using this data, I thought, okay, but that's, that's something now in the past, okay, we already know about COVID, we are talking here about post-COVID. And can, uh, can we use this same model in other, the same tools of organic and rational optimization to explain different scenarios for the future? I didn't do the ETC, I just began, but anyway, so that's the, the idea. We used the this, complex, this model of complexity simplified by space to analyze the post-COVID area, also using this experience that we mixed, as you see, the 40 years of, uh, of Portuguese evolution with just 12 months or 12 weeks of, uh, of change. So if you have the good parameters, eventually you can also use one and the other to simulate the short term and that at, at the same time to understand the scenarios for the long term uh, that's it. Okay. <coughs> and that's what, where I put. Okay, and that's where I I begin to design the, the different alternative scenarios that my uh, small argument with Patricia here yesterday that trying to, to show up this opportunity where in the middle of the crisis, if you have the right tool, we can in fact, doing different scenarios using the same model, we can in fact eventually influence the, the well, attack global warming or uh, at the same time as we understand the patterns of this. So, no. <coughs> two main differences. Uh, that uh, rational uh, concentration and organic concentration, because as, uh, as I can see, when uh, we, we decide collectively, many times we decide organically. So we, we tend to maximize the stock, build motorways, build pyramids, build statues in the Eastern Island, and that's our, the way we react to crisis, we build, we build things. And that, that is in a way, the, so we, we, and the state is like that. The state, if we have money, we do, we do it. So it is the average benefit equals to the average cost. So we typically have an organic attitude. <coughs> and so we can react because this is a role of the states and of the states, we can react like this. So it is possible that the state will react like that. My argument with the Patricia yesterday is that for Lisbon, in fact, they are putting the average cost equal to the average benefit in terms of the transportation uh, to tariffs. <coughs> okay, so we can have this attitude not only nationally, but European level, but nationally, and at the city level. And at the same time, but you can also have a rational perspective so that you maximize the flow. So your attitudes tend to maximize the flow in a typical uh, gravity model. So the gravity model comes from the <coughs> rational uh, <coughs> of the optimization of the entropy. Okay, and then you have other scenarios, pandemic continues at low level, or pandemic, well, continues to grow, and, and then you can introduce two other options on energy. That you have <coughs> any energy costs, low energy costs or high energy costs, uh, to adjust to global warming. And in the model, we can do these simulations. Because if you, if you have pandemic, what, what were the plan is that if you have pandemic, people will try to behave to, uh, internal to their own cities. So we have lockdowns. So we can somehow decrease the cost of internal relation within, with, uh, between, within cities, within city regions. <coughs> and uh, regarding the other connections. If you have uh, energy costs, it is the parameter of the space that in fact changes, so we can simulate that. 
and see what happens if we calibrate the model first. What happens to the shape of the of the of Portugal to this mi migration inside Portugal due to these different scenarios of that we can adopt now? And that's the the topic of this exercise to do this. I didn't do it a lot, but anyway, you see from the from the past. Which is, this is Portugal with the uh, Azores and Madeira. <coughs> and this is the, the zips curve across along 2000 from 60s to, to till now. And it is amazing that, in fact, I didn't make the, the, the check if, uh, if there is a, in this process, there is a rational uh, attitude of the country, or there, there is a, an organic attitude of the country. I did that for Romania in last, in the, that I presented in Romania, that what, and it is interesting for Romania that during Ceausescu period it was a, a Ceausescu attitude that, uh, that the, the, opera, uh, the organic model explains better the evolution of the uh, city regions in, in Romania, whereas in the other period the formula of the, the rational uh, uh, adjustment is better. Okay, of course we can see here <coughs> that this evolution is mainly due to, not to Lisbon, that's they more or less in the same uh, size, but to the peripheries of Lisbon and Porto uh, are growing, so these red ones grow, grow up, and all the interior, all the periphery goes up. So we have the red is in the 60s, and then it goes down. So, and this is eventually some, uh, certainly there is some strategy, not only because you can have middle-sized country, middle-sized cities growing up as well. We experienced this in people, cities that were more or less middle-sized, and, and then they lost their the land, land use changes, and then they lost, there was European integration and the related agriculture policy uh, that has a major impact on the land use. And then there was the, the entrepreneurs, uh, two or three families in each one of these cities that went off. And this created this, so there is an explanation for this, uh, or at least there is a narrative of this uh, evolution in Portugal, land use, entrepreneurship. And then these cities begin to, to grow, and uh, the zip curve uh, uh, concentrates not necessarily in Lisbon, but around Lisbon and around, around the uh, Porto region. So this is the, a simple model without yet this gravi uh, this gravity function. It is <coughs> a model that explains the growth in terms of the population of last period, the awaiting metrics of the space, and then dummies for for the Azores, Madeira, <coughs> and for it is just two periods, and for the decade of, or for the it is twenty years period for the 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 first period and. Okay, the, all the results, not only for the population in the previous period, but also for the weighting methods of the centrality of the place in the period before is important. And uh, <coughs> the dummy variables are also important. Of course, we have six seconds. So this is <coughs> just a first exercise. With the model that I developed for, uh, that was applied in this uh, paper from land use policy on the <coughs> American cities that transformed the, uh, the solar model into a demographic growth model, <coughs> justified by if, if the, we just need to justify free movement of people and the same rate of return on capital, and then we can somehow shift the GDP into population if people move. Really, and if the internal uh, rate of uh, uh, return is similar along the along the periods, <coughs> okay. And uh, this is uh, the what we have done for the organic model, which is a little bit more complicated here for <coughs> in terms of the the weighting matrix. What changes is the weighting matrix. It's not so the weighting matrix is not some some uh, experiment that you do with an H matrix or a queen matrix or, or hook matrix or whatever. It is something that comes out of an optimization, either operational opti or organic optimization 
or as a rational optimization. So the, this weighting thing that we, uh, we do in special econometric modeling, it is something that comes out of the optimization of the stock or of the flow in these uh, uh, interaction models. And it also gives, of course, we need some econometrician to help us here. It is the exports which are there. This is the interaction, which is also important. <coughs> and this is a correction of the exports that came when we. The exports is like the, the there. It's like a base model. It's like an input output model. We put the constraints of the input output model or in, the, in this very simple version, just put there the constraints that somehow your outcome depends on the exports. And it is just, the, but you need in the formula to have this balance and they have this dummy. So, and I didn't, yeah, because the formula for the, uh, for the rational model is a little bit more complicated and I didn't have time because of my cold and so on to, to, to do this in uh, yesterday or two days ago and, to, and not today. But anyway, I think it, it can work, and this is the exercise. The idea was then to came out with, uh, with simulations for these different scenarios <coughs> that, uh, that according to the conditions of organic uh, rational concentration at the national level, and also of the continuation of the pandemic uh, destabilization that we are not sure that we as a society are afraid of moving around and and also the energy risk so that the northern countries that have more more a more a higher footprint on uh, on carbon that would increase the tax on the environment so that uh, you you have a problem if you look at statistics it's incredible how these countries like sweden germany England, France, and other countries that have very low tax for the environment and a very high uh, footprint in terms of carbon. So if they change that, of course, then we'll, we'll have a different uh, uh, attrition for the distance and high, uh, uh, while there is not, or, uh, or even a different adoption of the electric vehicles. So uh, but what we can do in the model is to change the attrition function, the attrition parameter, to know the sensitivity <coughs> of the attrition parameter either the, and to change the internal uh, the, the, what, the internal distance to each one of the municipalities. And that's it, so I'm sorry not to have, but I didn't, uh, I didn't want to repeat myself in the, in, in the former, uh, in the former uh, presentations that I, we became a little fed up of ourselves and we repeat. So that's the, the, the idea. If to respond to this uh, workshop, that we can still use the simplicity of space to understand complexity. First, to use data that it is demographic data, because uh, if we have these simple assumptions, we can assume that people move where they have jobs and uh, so the, this uh, uh, demographic can explain very relatively well with the, the dynamics of the, each place. And then we can simulate uh, the different uh, uh, scenarios, what's going to happen if the, because this is the time to change policies. This is the time where simple, as I understood from yesterday, okay, if there are these signals that Katya presented, People are adopting more electric vehicles. And be, well, why? We don't go for it. And to go for it, we know what are the constraints of going for electric vehicles. And we know what are the constraints for going to. So instead of having big ideas that public transportation and bicycle is good, okay, okay, it can be good. Everything is good. But, but if people are moving in different directions, let's test, let's try to test where, why we don't help this movement into the, the same aim, which is the, well, to address on one hand the pandemic, on the other hand, which can be, that's the opportunity to address the issue of the environment global warming. Thank you very much. Well, I'm sorry I didn't interact too much with the, 
with Casio and uh, that provide me the data and with uh, that uh, still provide me some maps. But anyway, that's the, I thought it was more challenging for me to to try to grasp this uh, scheme for you rather than to to go back to my former presentation. Thank you. Yeah.